of worship and we're just inviting you to be with us. Amen. Are you ready to praise the Lord? Yeah. Yeah. Hallelujah. Hallelujah. Put your hands together. Come on. Like so. One more time.
we're not done yet. Tell them we're not done yet. Tell them we're not done yet. <laughs> awesome. This next song is a favorite of mine. It's called Not Forgotten. Are you ready, guys? Let's go. Put your hands together. Open wide and 
God, you remain to be our friend, you remain to be our Father. Lord, we worship you, we magnify you, O oh Lord, and we lift you up above every other name, O oh God. We lift you up above every other power, O oh God, because there's nothing that can compare to you, O oh God. I have a maker. He formed my heart before even time began. My life was in His hand. Let's do that one more time. I have a maker. He formed my heart. He formed my heart before even time began. Before even time began, my life was in His hand. and it's dark, oh Lord, you see it. You see our tears, oh Lord. You know our thoughts, you know our fears, oh God. And I thank you so much for giving us the Holy Spirit to comfort us. So Lord, I'm praying for every person, every person, Lord, uh, watching this and tuning in and probably they're at a place where they haven't seen you in a long time, oh Lord. And they've forgotten how it feels to be held in the arms of a loving Father, oh God. They've forgotten who formed them and uh, they've forgotten that you have a plan for them, oh Lord. Father, I pray that you speak. 
you speak words of encouragement, O Lord. Father, you speak words of love, O Lord. Father, speak to your children. Father, even the ones who cannot see it, O Lord. Father, may you embrace them, Lord, in your love. Father, we love you, we worship. And it's in Jesus' name we have worshipped. In Jesus' name we have worshipped. Wow, family, great to see you all. Uh, it's so, so good to have you here. So good to worship together, worship our King together. My name is Pastor M, uh, Pastor Maridi Wanjao, Senior Pastor of Mavuno Church. And wherever you're watching from, we are so, so glad you can worship with us today. Oh my goodness, what a great time of worship. And you know, here's the thing I really am excited about today. Today is a special service. We're going to be having a time of prayer for parents. Pastor Carol has been leading us through this incredible series. And I know you've been blessed, uh, for those of you who've been watching, for all our visitors, we're so glad you can join us today. And it's such a great, I, I know you're not here by coincidence. Uh, this is a great time. We're going to be praying for parents. Uh, but even if you're not a parent yet, uh, I really do believe that every single one of us, this series is just life. And I believe even if you're not a parent yet, that this is something you want to receive, to just understand, to take in, because God is going to do some incredible stuff, just healing stuff in us as we go through this time of, uh, of, of, of prayer, but also as we listen uh, to the, the sermons that you may have missed in the past. So hey, hey, uh, if you are watching from home, if you're watching from your office, if you're watching with somebody else, uh, but you're not in one of our churches right now, I want to encourage you to do something for us. If you just go to our website, www.mavunochurch.org, and uh, let us know. Uh, just fill out a little form that's on the website. Uh, you'll see the link on the, on the screen below. And Tell us where you are. Let us know a bit more. Just fill out that form. What it does, it helps us know who's watching, how we can be supporting you, how we can be in prayer for you, uh, how we can just be cognizant of you as part of this family. So whether you're watching on TV, whether you're watching online, we would love for you uh, just to tell us where you are. So make sure you fill out, even if you can do that right now, uh, that would be such an amazing thing. And uh, also just to mention that we're going through this whole series on parenting children, raising children. But it's such a powerful thing on Wednesday night as a community. This is a, the people who consider Mavuno Church their home. We have what we call family night. And we're walking through this experience of learning how to be spiritual parents. Because parent is not just a thing that you do to the, in the physical, but also in the spiritual realm as well. And so if you're interested, every Wednesday, 5.30 to 6.30, uh, you can log in, the information's there. And we would love to have you uh, with us as part of this family. So hey, we want to worship God with our tithes and offerings. And as we do so, I really do believe, and, and just starting this, this year, God's been teaching us about how to live in a divine economy, to move beyond just living in the physical economy to living in the divine economy. And one of the things that uh, Jesus taught his disciples how to do this, uh, he, he did because he taught them that, you know, when you live in the divine economy, money doesn't control you, but you control wealth, you control money. And there's just a, it's, a, it's a mindset shift. And uh, in Matthew chapter, se chapter 10, he sends his disciples out to preach. And he sends them out uh, in, in groups of two and tells them, listen, don't even carry stuff with you. Uh, don't even take, because you know what? God's going to provide for you. God's going to show you. I'm going to show you what a divine economy looks like. And then he tells them in verse, verse 7, as you go, proclaim this message. The kingdom of heaven has come near. And then he tells them, heal the sick, raise the dead, cleanse those with leprosy, drive out demons. Then he says this, freely you've received, freely give. Oh my gosh, <laughs> this is so cool. When you're in the divine economy, you don't hoard, you don't hold, because you know there's a source that you're connected to. Freely you receive, freely you give. And I know that this is something that my wife and I have practiced in our life as God has just taught us how to be free with the things that God gives us. And we never hold on tightly to the things of God because God is a God who is God of supply. You know, when your hand is clenched like this, you can never receive because your hand is too clenched. And many times what you have to do is be free in opening it up that you can receive what God has for you. And so I want to just thank all of you who I know have learned this lesson, have lived out this lesson. This has been your testimony. And for those of you who are still learning, this is our season to learn how to, because freely we've received, learn how to freely give. I want to just pray for us as we give our tithes and our offerings, but also as we prepare our hearts to listen to God's word. Father, I thank you for the people of Mavuno Church. Thank you for this family. Thank you for our visitors. Thank you for all who are watching today, who are part of us today. And Lord, as we worship you, we thank you that Lord Jesus, you are, you're, you're causing us to just see uh, you 
in everything we're doing. You're raising us up. You're, you're giving us a different vision. You're causing us to see you and to understand your economy, to understand how you work. You're teaching us how to understand parenting from a completely whole different uh, way of thinking uh, as the way of the world. And I want to just pray for your people, Lord, as they give freely according to the way that you've blessed them. I pray that there's no house that will lack because they've given. I pray that there's nobody here who would be poor because they were generous. I pray that, they, that Lord, you would show us that we can never outgive God. <laughs> that as we bless your work, that you will bless our hands. That, Lord, we can create even more resource that we can be generous with. I pray that, Lord, our families will be blessed. I pray that, Lord, our homes will be blessed. And I pray that right now, even as we prepare to receive your word, you'd open our hearts wide. Uh, wide, 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 that we would hear your word. I pray that, Lord Jesus, today there will be transformation. I pray that somebody's life will be changed. I know that, Lord, this is just going to be a powerful time of prayer and worship. And I pray that, Lord, even as we listen to your word, that, Lord, you just open our hearts wide and that, Lord, you would do the work you want to do in us. We love you, Lord. And we pray these things, believing and trusting in the precious name of our Lord and Savior Jesus. And God's people say it. Amen. Wow, what an amazing time of worship. You know, as we worship God, as we take time to praise Him, then His presence is truly with us. And I can say that for sure. Today, God's presence is with us as we worship Him this morning. Uh, my name is Pastor Carol Wanjao, and um, I serve in Mabuno Church as one of the executive pastors. And I want to say a warm welcome. I'm really excited that we can worship God together and I really want to give a special welcome for, to those ones who are joining us for the first time. I want to welcome you to this service and to Mavuno Church. And we are so delighted that you can be with us today. And if you're looking for a church family to belong to, here at Mavuno we say, look no further, you are already home. And uh, for our first time visitors, we do need to let you know that we've been going through an amazing uh, sermon series this month on parenting and I want to give you just uh, you know to to do a quick recap to kind of you know bring you up to speed in week one we examined the parenting mandate that was the someone for week one and we discovered that our primary responsibility as parents is to introduce our children to faith as this forms the foundation upon which everything else is built so that was our first week in the second week we saw the need for us to parent intentionally and we discussed the issues that trip us up and compromise our ability to do so. And we said that, that uh, for, for good parenting, it begins with us as parents. So that was week two. In week three, we talked about raising successful children. And success, according to the Bible, is measured when children are able to pass on godly values to the next generation and that the family continues to prosper. That is what we said is, true success you know uh, that's what we are aiming for when we are raising our children and then finally last week which was week four we talked about every parent's headache and we said that in every family there is that child who has an independent spirit which if left unchecked can lead them to become rebellious and we discussed ways of overcoming this so wow i mean it's just been such an exciting month you know we've learned lots of things and I'd encourage you, if you have not watched any of these sermons, uh, you can do so by getting onto our Mavuno Church YouTube. Alternatively, if these sermons have been beneficial to you, then please share. Share the link with your friends or relatives whom you think will benefit. So I want to pick up from where we, last, we left off last week. But today, I will not be preaching as someone. Instead, I will be praying for you as parents. I mean, how cool is that? Uh, and so to prepare, I want to, you to get some liquid oil uh, and, um, you know, in a small bottle like this. You can use any liquid oil that you have in, the, in your home and because it's an exercise that I want us to do at the end of our prayer time. And so, you know, let me just give you a minute to just rush and to get this oil if you're watching from home. And to guide our prayer time, I want to tell the parable of the sower. And this is found in Matthew 13, uh, chapter 13, verse 1 to 9, and, um, and again, verse 18 to 23. And in this parable from verses 1 to 9, it's a very interesting one because uh, Jesus first shares the parable uh, in verses 1 to 9, and he kind of talks about the four different kinds of soil. 
And then you have to kind of read, uh, go down to uh, verses 18 to 23, and he explains to his disciples the meaning of the parable. And that is what we're going to do uh, today. We're going to read it, the parable, and then we're also going to go and look at, it, at, at its meaning, especially as it applies to us as parents. So I hope you're ready. Hope you have your Bibles with you. And uh, so let's turn to these uh, verses, to these chapters, Matthew 13, verses 9, 1 to 9. I hope you're ready, so let's go. That same day, Jesus went out of the house and sat by the lake. Such large crowds gathered around him that he got into a boat and sat in it while all the people stood on the shore. Then he told them many things in parables, saying, A farmer went out to sow his seed. As he was scattering the seed, some fell along the path and the birds came and ate it up. Some fell on rocky places where it did not have much soil. It sprang up quickly, but because the soil was shallow. And when the sun came up, the plants were scorched and they withered because they had no root. Then other seed fell among thorns, which grew up and choked the plants. Still other seed fell on good soil where it produced a crop, a hundred 60 or 30 times what was sown. Then the parable ended with, whoever has ears, let them hear. So I want us to look at this parable and we're going to start with Matthew 13, 1 to 9 and we're going to see what is the meaning, what was Jesus saying. So a man went out to sow, stands, the man represents God and the seed is his word or his instruction. Okay, so some feet, seed fell on the path and the birds ate it. And here, the birds represent Satan. The path represents parents or people who hear the word of God, but failing to understand it, Satan then steals that word or instruction away from them. Then we go to um, the seed that fell on rocky ground where there was little soil. And this seed uh, on the rocky ground represents parents, or people who respond with initial enthusiasm. But the word of God does not sink in deep. And when persecution or hard times are represented by the sun come along, they give up. They give up at once. Then we had the third kind of the soil. You know, this is where it falls among the thorn bushes and where it's choked up. And here the thorn bushes, uh, 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 they choke. And what it means by choke is that they choke God's word or instruction. So someone hears the word of God, but you know the, 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 the concerns for riches and other worries about life causes the plant to die. So that's the third kind. Then we have the fourth kind uh, of soil. And this one is the one that we talked about that it's good soil and the plants produce a good crop, you know, 60 fold, uh, 30 fold, 60 fold, 100 fold. And this one, it's the good soil represents parents or people who hear God's word or instruction for them, and they immediately obey, you know. So that is the meaning of these soils uh, uh, that Jesus was talking about. But I want us to look at the significance for today and to ask ourselves, what is the significance? You know, if Jesus was to be talking to us directly today and describing us using these soils, what would be the significance? Again, we'll go back. You know, the man who went out to sow grain, it is, you know, the significance is when we hear God's word uh, within us, it starts to grow. You know, the more we hear God's word, the more we read God's word, it's like it's planted in our hearts and it starts to grow within us. Okay? So, now we come to the one where, you know, it fell on seed. Uh, sorry, or, uh, it fell on the path and the birds ate it. And this one we shall call it parent one. Because <laughs> we're talking about what is the significance for us. So this one is parent one. And these are the parents or children who don't, or sorry, or people who don't live the full Christian life because they have not prioritized the things of God. Okay, so they fail to understand God's word or instruction for them and they let it slide rather than seek to understand it. That it was, it's what it means. You know, the word is shared, but it is stolen from them. Then we have the parent too. And this one again was the seed that fell on rocky ground. What does this mean for us? What kind of person is it describing? What kind of parent is it describing? Or even, even a single person. And this one, it's when you hear the word of God, 
but do not commit to it. So during church, you know, you're excited. We're excited to learn new things, but we give up when the things, when the going gets tough. Perhaps past parenting failures or other failures in life causes, you know, the parent or the person to lose hope that anything can change in their situation. And they do not have the faith that God can change that situation. So that is uh, the person who is being described as soil number two, um, where it falls in the rocky soil. Then we have soil number three, uh, this is parent three, where it falls, you know, in, thorn, in thorns and it's choked. And the significance for this is that it describes the parent or the person or the people who are too concerned with what others are saying or thinking and they worry you know too much what you know about the society and just so many things and so they you know they are they are, they are the people who are influenced by peer, peer pressure so they may be experiencing jealousy or anger or concerned with materialism and are not as present for their children or things of god because they are so they are running so fast after all these things then we have again you know the parent for the seed that fell on good soil and this one represents the parents or the people who have strong faith and they remain dedicated to God even when things are difficult. So as I've gone through the various conditions of our hearts, I want us to evaluate ourselves honestly. You know, at Mavuno, we say that we are a real people who have real issues before a real God. And if I can be honest, in different seasons of my life, I have been honestly this all these kinds of soils. You know, there was a time I was so busy and distracted running our family business. I mean, I was working hard to provide for our kids and so I kind of justified myself uh, during that season. But sad to say, I was not as present for our children. At other times, due to past parenting failures, I have doubted if things can change at home. But hey, listen to me. If we want to see any changes in our lives and also that of our children, we need to be people who are humble and who, you know, are honest about where we are in, you know, the season of our heart or where we are and who also have an obedient heart. And this is the key. The key to us growing, to us changing is this. And this is what I want us to remember from today's prayers. That is the key to growing and seeing God transform us and our children is a humble and obedient heart. And this is what I want us to come, this is the attitude that I want us to come with as we are coming into these prayers, as we are praying for you as parents, as we are you know, saying these prayers together. Our second Chronicle says this, if my people who are called by my name will humble themselves and pray and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then I will hear from heaven and I'll forgive their sin and heal their land and there we can save family. And the promise here is this, as we humble ourselves, as parents, as we acknowledge our shortcomings, then guess what? God himself not only forgives us, but he'll also heal our families. As in, God takes it upon himself to intervene on our behalf and he begins to soften our hearts as parents and also the hearts of our children. And who wouldn't want that? I mean, who wouldn't want to see God working in our families? And I'll be the first one to say, yes, Lord, I confess. I have messed up and I need you to intervene in my family beginning with myself. So I want to ask you again, what soil are you? Which soil are you? And I want to begin by praying for parents in category one. And with these ones, you know, these are the parents who do not prioritize the things of God. And, you know, maybe you're happy to come to church. Indeed, you're happy to bring your children to church. But that is it. You know, you're a Sunday believer. You do not engage. You know, you're not in a life group or a discipleship group. And neither do you volunteer in ministry. You have not invested in growing in the things of God. Maybe you could be asking, what is wrong with this? You know, you're still going to heaven and <laughs> you have the fire insurance. That might be the case, but in the kingdom of God, there are no bystanders. God does not allow for bystanders. And, and, and Revelation 3.16 gives us a warning, and this is the way I want us to understand it. I don't want us to misunderstand this. Revelation 3.16, it's like how we tell our children. 
hey, if you do not study, you will fail. And so Revelation 3.16 is, is a warning to us as God's children done within the very best of intentions. And the Bible also does this for us. And so we should take that up warning. And here is what I would paraphrase it and say. So because you're lukewarm, neither hot nor cold, I will spit you out of my mouth. Now this was a warning given to the church in Lodisha. What God was saying, the way you're going, you will move from being lukewarm to cold and I'll have no option but to spit you out. Now in addition to being spat out, um, you're also not able to train your children in godly living because that is not your priority. Yeah? So you might take your children again, as we said, to church, hoping they will catch some religion. But the biggest message you're sending to your children is, do as I say, not as I do. And your children will see through it. So if this is you, and you recognize that you're lukewarm, you have not prioritized the things of God, take this warning as words from a gracious father, warning his children of the danger of continuing in these ways. And here's the thing, amazing thing about God. He's able to help you. He's able to help you reprioritize your life as you surrender yourself to him. And I want us to pray for you. So let us pray. The prayer is on the screen. And so I want us to read it together by, as an act of confession uh, and as an act of humility coming before God and asking for his help. Are we ready? Let's pray. Dear Lord, I confess that I have been lukewarm. I have prioritized other things and not you. I ask you for your forgiveness and commit to seeking you. I also ask that according to your word in Ezekiel 36 verse 26, that you remove from me my heart of stone and give me a heart of flesh and move, you, and move me to obey you. In Jesus' name, amen. Now imagine that this is such a simple prayer, but God is able to change your heart as you commit to seek after him. In fact, I pray this for myself all the time. And I can testify that God has really worked on my heart. So if this is you, I urge you, I urge you and encourage you, join a life group. Volunteer at church. There are many serving opportunities and your pastor will guide you. And remember, as we're doing all these things, the key to growing and seeing God transform us and our children is a humble and obedient heart. Amen? Amen. So I want us to move to parent two. This is the parent who has experienced failure as a parent and has lost hope. Because of what you've gone through, you've lost hope that God answers prayer and that he's able to bring change in your situation. Listen to me. Jeremiah 32 verse 27, God says, I am the Lord, the God of all mankind. Is there anything too difficult for me? You see, God is powerful. He's the creator of your children and he's able to speak to them and bring them round. I know this for a fact. In fact, God so loves your children. He loves them so dearly. He even died for them. <laughs> and you have not yet died for your children, but God has. This is the extent that God loves your children and how much he's willing to intervene and to speak and to change them. So let's join our faith together and let's pray. Again, we are praying and the prayer is on the screen. Dear Lord, I confess that I have lost hope. I have tried my best with my children, but my best has not worked. I ask for your forgiveness in taking matters into my own hands. I have parented my children according to what I thought was right and not according to your ways. Please forgive me. I now cancel the ground gained by Satan in my children's lives. I cancel it in the name of Jesus and command every deceiving spirit, spirit of rebellion, spirit of love for the world, spirit of addictions, spirit of sexual promiscuity, spirit of pride and bitterness be uprooted from my children's lives right now in the name of Jesus. And I instead surrender them to you and pray that you save my children, that you fill them with your Holy Spirit and they'll start being loving, joyful, peaceful, kind, patient, gentle, and self-controlled. 
I pray these things in Jesus' mighty name. And all people said, Amen and Amen. If your parent too, I also encourage you to join church, to engage with church. Join a life group or a discipleship group and also start volunteering. As you do this, you'll be surrounded by a community that can pray with you and also support you and encourage you in your parenting journey. And ask your pastor how to do this and you will be assisted. If you're watching online, send a text to the number on the screen and again, you will be assisted. Now to parent three. Are you tired? <laughs> Are you seeing yourself as both parent one and two? Do not worry. God does not tire of us coming before him. As we humble ourselves and seek to obey his instructions, we shall see God move in an unimaginable ways in our families. So let's go to parent three. Now, parent three is the hustler. And this is not a political statement. Parent three has so many concerns and is working hard to provide for his or her family. But as we read in scripture, the motives are not always as pure because Matthew 13, 22 says, the one who received the seed that fell among the thorns is the one who hears the word, but the worries of this life and the deceitfulness of wealth choke it, making it unfruitful. Ouch! The Bible does not mince its words. It is the deceitfulness of wealth that is choking God's word in this parent. And by the way, I was that parent. <laughs> I was that parent. But here is God's word for you. Matthew 16 verse 26. This is God's word. What will it profit a man if he gains the whole world and forfeits his soul? Or what shall a man give in return for his soul? If we paraphrase this in parenting terms, we can say, what will it profit a man or a woman if he gains the whole world and forfeits or loses his children? Or what shall a man or woman give in return for their children? Listen, guys, this is serious. You cannot afford to lose your children on account of providing for them. But don't get me wrong. My husband and I work really hard to provide for our family, but not at the expense of our children. And in fact, for us, what we discovered is that the antidote of the power of money of our lives is through giving. That's what breaks that power. And so we give. We tithe to God and by doing so, acknowledge that he is our provider and we also ask him to break the power of money in our lives. So if this is you, let us pray. God is able to break that power. God is able to reprioritize so that you do not lose your children in the process of trying to provide for them. Let's pray together. Dear Lord, I confess that I have allowed the love for money and the deceitfulness of wealth to rule my life. I ask for your forgiveness. I realize that I've not been as present for my children and we are estranged. In Malachi 4, 6, you say, he will turn the hearts of the parents to their children and the hearts of their children to their parents. Do this for me and my children, I pray. I also commit to tithe and ask that you break the hold of money over my life. In Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Powerful, isn't it? And I can't wait to see what God does in our lives as he answers these prayers. So if you're parent three, I urge you and encourage you to also engage with the church. Join a life group. Join a discipleship group. A volunteer so that you can begin to reprioritize and place God in his rightful place. And I want us to remember this as we are doing all these things. The key to growing and seeing God transform us and our children is a humble and obedient heart. Amen? Amen. Are we ready? We go to parent four. Now for parent four, this is the model parent, you know, who hears the word of God and immediately applies it to their lives. And, but I don't believe that we have to wait for five years to become this parent. I mean, I know that some of you come from church traditions that require you to go through certain hoops before you become a certified member. But according to this parable of the different soils, you only need to apply what you have learned. So if your parent one, or parent two, or three, or even all of them, just apply what we have instructed you. Namely, 
join a life group or discipleship group, volunteer to lead such a group, you know, or any other ministry available in church. And also remember to tithe. If you apply that, you become parent home. <laughs> but I do want to say, however, that no matter where you are in your parenting journey, you are the best parent for your children. Listen to me. Do not allow the devil to deceive you into thinking that you have no moral authority to speak into the lives of your children. God knew that when he gave you your children, there were challenges that you would experience. I mean, whatever you've gone, you're going through or have gone through, it is not new to God. It is not foreign. He did not even catch him by surprise. But God is able to use these challenges to work good in both your life and that of your children as you allow him to. Indeed, Romans 8.28 says, and we know that in all things, not some things, citing that they are too difficult for God, but in all things, God works for the good of those who love him, who have been called according to his purpose. So I want to say, forget about the past. It is behind you. There's nothing you can do about it, but there's something that you can do about today and tomorrow. And again, I want us to keep remembering this. The key to growing and seeing God transform us and our children is a humble and obedient heart. And that's what we're praying for all our hearts as parents and also our children. So I want to bring this prayer time to an end and I want to do so by releasing an anointing over you as parents. Are you ready to receive the anointing? I want to release the anointing of the spirit of parenthood over you and to declare ease and joy in your parenting journey. And so I want to, you know, for you to put out your hands so that you can receive as I pray over you. Dear Father, I present these parents to you. They have been harassed and pressed hard on every side by the enemy who has even stolen their understanding of what it means to be a parent. I pray, Father, that you will forgive them. I also thank you that Jesus died on the cross to restore us to the rightful place as spiritual authorities in our children's lives. I now restore back these parents as the spiritual leaders over their homes and ask that you will fill them with your Holy Spirit. Cause them to always seek you for wisdom on how to lead their families. I now release your anoint this anointing upon them to be the warriors who defend their families, to be the priests who pray over their families, to be the providers who provide for their families, and to be the prophets who will lead their families in godliness. I also ask you for ease in their parenting journey and ask you that you remove any obstacle that the enemy has put in their way. I speak healing over these families in their bodies and in their relationships. I pray all these things in Jesus' name. And all God's people said, Amen and Amen. Now finally, and this is the last final, <laughs> here's the last ta task I want you to do as the spiritual heads in your home. I want to lead you in a short but very significant prayer where you set up an altar in your home. And for those of you, you know, who, for everyone who's listening, an altar is simply dedicating your home and family as a place where you shall honor God. So remember the oil that I talked about? If you're watching from home, this is the oil uh, that we had talked about earlier that we're going to pray and I'm going to show you, you know, just where to, how we're going to use it. Uh, if you're in church, then I'd encourage you to say this prayer and then get your oil at home and pour it at a place in your home that you shall, you know, raise up as an altar. So let's pray. Dear Lord, we commit as parents to honor you and to raise our children according to your ways. We denounce Satan and all his works in our family and demolish every satanic altar speaking against us. We raise up an altar unto you, Lord, and declare that our home is a place that is dedicated to you and in a place where we shall raise our children in godliness. And now let's pour the oil in our, in, our, in our homes. And we pray all these things in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. And all God's people said, Amen and Amen. What an amazing time of prayer. I definitely look forward to hearing testimonies as God answers these prayers 
So share your testimony with your small group leader or discipleship group leader or even your pastor. Go now in God's peace and parent your children according to the ways of the Lord. Amen. Come before you just as I am. I lay me at your feet. And I bring before you all that I have and lay it at your feet. For you are worthy, 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 Lord. You are worthy, worthy, worthy soul. Praise like oil. For you I pour it out. For you I pour it out. I pour, I pour it out for you. Praise like oil. For you I pour it out. For you I pour. Out, I pour, I pour it out for you. I pour this perfume not to impress the people standing around. Oh, I pour this perfume because of your worthiness. As I behold you now, for you are worthy, 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 Lord. You are worthy, 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 so praise like oil. For you I pour it out, for you I pour it out, I pour, I pour it out. You praise like oil for you, I pour it out for you. I pour it out, I pour, I pour it out for you. It's foolishness, I know, but your foolishness is wiser than my wisest. Wiser, wiser. It's foolishness, I know, but your foolishness is wiser.